Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, for this week we'll be doing something a little bit different. I know I've been making a lot of cakes, but I actually wanted to take a break from baking desserts. Uh, mostly because I want to watch what I eat for about the next month and a half. I have a honeymoon trip planned for Hawaii in May, which I'm super excited about. So I kind of want to like make sure I don't eat too crazy before then because I know on my trip I tend to gorge a lot. Anyways, for this week, um, I still wanted to do a fun project. And this is something that's been kind of cooking up in my brain for quite a while and it's not like I'm the first one to ever do it I'm sure there's like a million people out there who've already made this um, but I wanted to make a mandrake plant specifically the one from the Harry Potter series um, but they had uh, Harry in his herbology class with Professor Sprout and she had focused on mandrake roots as one of her lessons and in the movie you can see that when you pull the mandrake plant from the soil the roots look like an actual baby which was a common theme with like the whole mythology around mandrakes but I wanted to do the one that specifically looked like it was from the Harry Potter movie just because I really admired like how the sculpting was done. He was just this ugly little old wrinkly dirty baby <laughs> and something about that just made me really admire him. <laughs> so yeah, it's always been a project I wanted to do and I thought this is a good time to do it. Um, I thought about making it in cake, but I would like to have something more permanent as a decoration in my home. Um, I love all things green, I love plants, but I do not have a green thumb. So I thought this would be a fun way to add some greenery to my home um, without having to kill anything. As for materials, I thought I'd use what I had on hand and also pick up a couple of things at Michael's that I still needed. Um, so what I'll be using is First, the terracotta pot um, that I got at Michael's for like two bucks, really cheap. Some wire to use for his armature. Um, some tin foil as well. I also have the Sculpey that I used previously for my terrariums. Um, for the soil for the pot, I actually have real soil. This is from one of the many plants I've killed over the years. So I have this kind of just laying around. And I thought I'd mix that with some Elmer's glue so that it stays put and it doesn't get all over the actual sculpt. And then from Michael's, a bunch of greenery. So I actually managed to pull together kind of like a rough sketch of what I wanted him to look like and how I wanted to construct him. Um, so I made little notes and you can see like I made this wire, so this will be his wire armature. He's going to be wrapped in foil and tape. Um, this is going to be, this dark spot's going to be soil and he's going to be resting on it somehow without like breaking his legs when I pull him out from the pot um, and how his leaves are going to be attached to that top. So I really put in some time and effort into preparing this time, which I have to say I'm really proud of because usually I always just wing everything. So the first step was building the armature or that inside wire structure that would act as the base of my sculpt. I probably should have used pliers and wire cutters a lot more, but I'm pretty inexperienced when it comes to sculpting in general, so it actually didn't occur to me until much later. I used a pretty thick wire for his body um, just to make sure that it was structurally sound. But all the like little rooty bits of his fingers and toes um, were made of a much flimsier, thinner wire. And I did it this way so I would be able to sculpt those bits a little bit more naturally and control their shape more. To bulk him up with material that wasn't just clay, I used tin foil and I also reinforced with bits of masking tape. And from there, I started to slowly build up the layers of clay. Um, I'm actually baking at different steps of this process, so multiple times, so that I ensure that the clay is solidly baked and not all like mushy on the inside.
He had quite the thick booty. Um, but I'm adding holes to the top of his head where the stems of the leaves should go before I pop him back into the oven. It's been a few days now. Um, I actually let him dry over the weekend, uh, but this is what he looks like. Just like how he looked like when I put him in the oven. Super crazy and probably really horrifying to look at. But now is the fun part. I actually get to put down the details on his body and face and give him the little roots that he has for hands and feet. Um, I'm gonna do my best to take my time because I always tend to rush. Um, and yeah, here we go. The next round of layering clay was for all the wrinkles in his body and the details in his face. You can see me add like a little bit at a time, bit by bit, and I thought this would make his craggly layers way more defined rather than if I just like put down a whole glob of clay and tried to sculpt from there. Finally adding his facial features, I left it for last only because I knew it'd be the most fun and satisfying to sculpt. He did look super crazy before I finished him off. I baked him again before this step, um, but once he was out, I was ready to put on the wire base of his stems. I thought it'd be easier to do it this way so that my proportions were right when it comes to like his body versus like the stems on his head. Um, I wasn't super confident about my skills with armature because really it was my first time and I didn't think it would cause much issue uh, when baking. I really wasn't sure what to do with the leaves, so I was kind of stalling with my cat, um, but I was still excited to get them on anyways. I did have to brainstorm a bit though. exactly sure which day um, of this project that I'm working on everything's just been really backed up like I had to take my cat to the vet because we thought he was sick uh, then we had to take my dog to the vet because she was sick um, and she had to get some surgery done so it's just been kind of a stressful time so all of that is over with now so I can go back to focusing on my mandrake um, it's funny because I was like starting to seriously work on it yesterday, but I managed to break my flower pot. But all is well. I went out this morning and bought another one. They're like $2 from Michael's, which is good. Um, so we are going to keep trucking on today. Hopefully I can get him baked in the oven. Here is what I have so far. Basically, I just need to get the rest of his like little roots um, covered. Right now, they're just exposed wire. Um, so just cover that with a very thin layer of Sculpey and then figure out a way to attach the leaves on top of his head. I'm not exactly sure how, but we're gonna wing it as always.
So when I clipped the leaves off of the little branch that I bought, they stick straight up. And if I'm going to attach them straight up, I mean, they don't look bad. They're just not the look I'm going for. Like if you look at the mandrake from the Harry Potter movie, the leaves kind of swoop down, right? More of like how a tree would lay. So this is an issue. I realized if I get those leaves and use a, what do you call this? <coughs> pliers. <laughs> Once you use pliers, you can kind of like fold it how you want it to lay and then clamp it. And then it'll kind of create more of this like swooped down effect. So when I figure out a way to attach him, it'll look more like natural. Okay, I put the little guy in the oven. Next thing I'm going to tackle while I wait for him to bake off is the soil of the pot. And when it comes to that, I could use regular soil, but painting Sculpty with acrylic makes it really sticky. And I don't want like bits of soil on him, even though he's technically pulled from dirt. I want it to be like a relatively clean process when I'm pulling him in and out of the pot. Um, so, what I'm going to attempt to do is take a mixture of this glue as well as some potting soil that I had shown earlier and kind of mix it into a consistency that will then harden so it's like real fake soil if that makes any sense. So what I'm going to do is get this piece of cardboard, um, cut a circular shape out of it a little bit smaller than the full rim so that when I place the disc inside it sits lower than the very top. And then I'll put um, that fake real soil on top of the cardboard disc so when you look at it, all you'll see is soil. And then I'll make a little space um, for the little guy to hang out. Got my Disney Christmas plate that I will be sacrificing for this project. And I also have that potting soil I mentioned and this clear Elmer's glue. So here we go. I'm going to pour the glue first. Um, I'm just gonna do a really small layer and I think that should be good enough. I've seen like fake soil tutorials where they say to use like cat litter and coffee grounds but i have real soil so why not right i'm just gonna mix this up i think we're gonna need a little bit more glue so while this mixture is still wet i'm going to put them into the pot
I actually realized um, that the pot I had bought looked a little too new and a little too clean. I had some time to kill um, while the glue in the soil was drying, so I used this time to antique the pot as best as I could. This was my first time doing it, so it was kind of an awkward process. Mandrake just came out of the oven. It's a little bit warm, um, but looking good and baked. Now I just have to um, add all of his like little root fingertips. Hopefully that works out okay. That's probably the part I'm most nervous about. And then I'll bake him off one more time and that'll be the end of the baking. It's painting day, probably my most favorite part of this whole process. Excited to get him done. Um, I'll probably glue on the leaves after he's fully painted, but it's Friday, feeling good, feeling excited to get this done. This is the pot that I worked on yesterday. Um, the glue has completely dried, and if you touch it, it feels like plastic almost, and no residue comes off of my fingers, so this is exactly like the finish that I wanted. Um, I think the only issue is that when you look inside, you can kind of still see like the corrugated cardboard, and I don't really want that to be super visible when you're looking at the figure. Um, so I think I'll go in with like maybe some dark brown paint um, just because I'm a little too lazy to go in and like try to stick more of that gluey soil to the side. I think it'd probably be a pain in the butt anyways. But otherwise, I really like how it turned out. Um, obviously, I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to like fake antiquing things, but it looks nice and dirty and that's exactly the look I was going for. This is just the base coat that I have on, um, but I'm still happy with the color. I only painted the very top because I kind of want to wait for him to completely dry before I flip him over and paint on the other side just so that it's less messy. But I'll go ahead and paint the pot, that inside part that you can clearly see here um, while I wait for this guy to dry off. Once I started to paint the details on his face, I knew it was finally coming together. 
last step was to actually attach the leaves to the stems on his head. Um, I used a mixture of Gorilla Glue and hot glue gun to make sure that they stay put. And voila, here is my mandrake. And here is the finished mandrake root. I'm really happy with how he turned out. I will say um, it was kind of tricky to get him to sit in his pot and he's actually like leaning forward because or leaning backwards only because his booty is like super heavy but you can't really tell once he's in the pot I just have to be really careful when I'm like pulling him in and out um, but otherwise really happy with how he came out um, hope you enjoyed the video uh, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time bye